Hi, welcome to the 30 days to catch session. I think there are actually 29 days if you ask me, if you don't count today. And uh, I guess all of you are eagerly waiting for it. Akriti, Tata, Irshad, Sridharshini, and a lot, many of you. What I plan to do in the next 30 odd minutes first, and then we'll take up questions and answers, is, uh, and then probably uh, you know address your questions, is what should you do in the last 30 days? That's going to be the focus of it. Can you still make it some difference in life of what you have done till now? If so many months that you have been putting in effort has not borne fruit, if whatever effort that you have put in the last couple of months especially, and you find that your scores are still stuck, and you think that there are just about 29, 30 days to go, I mean, are you in a position to say that, boss, I don't give up, kar raha hu, I don't want to waste my time kind of things? Or is it time to think, start thinking that, hey, do you think I should write an NMAT or a SNAP or a ZAT or an IFT or something else? And CAT seems to be too out of grasp. Or there are days saying that, look, you're doing it fine, but what is it that last 30 days that one needs to do to kind of make it really big on the D-Day? That's on the 28th of November. All this and many more. This is what I plan to have, guys. Welcome to this very special session, 30 days to CAT uh, coming up. Few, not many of you are still there, I guess. I hope you will use this session to understand what can you do to maximize your scores on the 28th. I'm going to use a presentation, very small presentation. Go through that and I will go through that and hopefully you will find a very clear-cut plan of what should you be doing in each of the sections, within each section, which topics that you need to work on, and many more than that, okay? So once again, very good evening to you, Kundan, Kolimi, Nehal, Shahat, Anmol, Anush Anushka, Pooja, all of you, I can see that. You've been very nice to uh, do this. Let me also share a very, very nice uh, presentation in front of you. Let me see if I can present that to you. Yeah, this is the presentation. You guys can see it, I hope. Yeah, you can see this presentation, I hope. Very good evening to you again, Satyam. Mayank, sir, my score is 81 on AIMCAT. Can I go to 100 plus? Absolutely, yeah. you can go much more than that. Satyam, Shubham, CT, Sanjay, all of you. I am going to take care, take you through this 30 days to CAT 2021, exactly like what we have. If you count um, today also, if you count today also, so I'm going to give you a presentation very, very quickly. What is my agenda today? Last 30 days, do you really need a plan? Certain important questions that I'm going to pick it up. 2021 pattern is still not clear what's going to be and what percentiles are expected, but I'm going to give you a percentage marks which should be cracked or should be aimed at. Then analysis of VARC strategy. In fact, I have something called a moving average plan. Stick, taking stock of the five mock moving average. In fact, if you go to the drill down analysis, I have updated that on your aspiration portals also. So we look at that if you are a career launcher student. If you're not, I'm still going to tell you how do you use the last five mocks to figure out where is your preparation going. If you look at a stock, if you really look at a stock, why do you say that it's taking stock? Because if you look at whether should you buy a stock or not buy a stock, you look at the moving average, a 50-day moving average, 200 DMA, etc. kind of things. What I'm going to tell you is what is more relevant for you is the last five mocks moving average. I'm going to discuss that with you. Analysis of VARC strategy and a DILR and QA. And lastly, I'm going to give you a very smart, probably a very 28-day plan of what should you do. And hopefully, my last few words today, 30 days to go, will kind of give you that kind of a confidence that, look, there is no way you are going to give up on this. Okay? Is that fine, guys? If there's, of course... Uh, <laughs> Harvey Specter is asking how to survive the burnout in the last days. First, don't think about the last days at all. Okay? So we look at that. And uh, I'm pretty sure that you will look at it. Some of the important FAQs that you might still have is, hey, should I look at new topics at this stage of the game? My answer to that is, 
probably no if there are topics that you have either not studied at all or if there are topics that you have never uh, been able to get marks in despite real effort i am saying if you have not put an effort this is the time to put in this is the time to put in that effort but if you have not put if you are after putting in effort you are not able to make any headway of this boss just ignore that this is another thing which is keeps coming up again and again and again and i've done this before i want you to go back to that basic thing of how to select sets in di or how to select easy questions in qa what should i do if i'm getting stuck in a passage set of question all these questions keep coming in and i'm pretty sure you have some of these questions also in your mind i'm going to answer them at the end of the session but these are normal questions these are genuine questions and if you did not have them then i think there is a problem so you have them you are a normal person friends so relax we can do that but i start with the cat 2021 paper we don't still know what's going to happen will they give a 76 question paper itself like it was last year and the mock also has been shown the cat 2020 slot 1 paper or will there be a difference one of the things that we expect that it could be a 66 question paper given the reason that last year if you look at 2019 actually it was a 3 hour paper and 100 questions when they reduced it to 2 hours ideally they should have reduced it to 66 67 questions but what they did not do is what uh, happened in cat 2020 cat 2020 they had 76 questions so we believe that this year there is a possibility that they will kind of make undo the so to say uh, the imbalance if i may call that last year having said that having said that frankly speaking whether 66 questions or 76 questions the fact that you have only 2 hours to go means the scores that you will do or scores you will get will will remain very very similar so let's look at what is the scores that i expect you to get if you get a 50% score it's almost guaranteed that you will get a 99 percentile in fact this is something which i keep saying every every time it can only be more this year and at a 60% score that is if you have 228 114 plus another 20 i mean worst case scenario another 20 130 plus is a guaranteed 99.9 percentile this year not even 99.8 99.9 percentile this year is my prediction this year in fact this are high level numbers that i'm giving you chances are very high that actually the percentage required will only go down rather than go up whatever may be the level of difficulty of the paper because the paper is only for 2 hours before you realize 40 minutes get over and that is one of the reasons why you get less marks in general so let's take stock of where we are what i am going to look at is before you kind of ask questions before you ask a lot of questions is how do i take stock what do i do to figure out what i do so here is what i have what i call the mock moving average or five mock moving average if you go to the drill down analysis i have made sure that there is a check box available for you if you are a career launcher student you can check the last five mocks that you have written let's say the cdc 9 uh, or cdc 10 which is your all india mock cat open mock or a cdc 8 cdc 7 or a practice mock 1 or a practice mock 5 or whatever that may be you can look at the last five mocks and find out what is going in your exam i strongly believe my friends that your scores can change only through two interventions the first one is by increasing attempts the other was one by is increasing accuracy if your attempts have not increased in the mocks don't expect that in the actual exam they will increase so whatever you need to do you need to do it in the next 30 days similarly if your accuracy hasn't been great in the mocks directly thinking that on the day of the d day or the day of the actual cat exam there is going to be a sudden increase in the accuracy 
won't happen. It will not happen. Which means all the interventions that you require, all the interventions to improve either accuracy or the attempts have to be done now. And there is enough time for both. There is enough time for both, given that we have 29 days to go. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So I have put together an Excel sheet, some kind of an Excel sheet like this you need to make up. I know it is impossible for you to even see what it is. Do not worry about this. Do not worry about what this is because I'm going to showcase this exactly what it is in the next few slides. But can you make something like this, the five mock moving average for yourself? What will you do? Something like this to start with. If this is the latest mock, mock N minus one, make an Excel sheet for yourself. The last five mocks. Let's say the number of questions that we have got in whatever random manner is some 355. Don't look at that number. Look at what is your average. Number of attempts you have made is 264. That means attempts percentage is pretty good. Number of corrects is only 175. Accuracy percentage is 66. Net marks is 41%. Let's say this is what you got. What I am trying to explain is, can you make, can you make a five mock moving average like this for yourself? You can see that in one mock, you would have got very high. In one mock, you would have got very low. It will happen. That's not nor abnormal. It is normal. But you know that on an average day, on an average day, you will be in that 40% if this is the net marks you are getting. That means 228 marks, if you are getting somewhere like that, around 90, what, 114 minus 23, that's about uh, 91 marks. That's, that's exactly what you might be getting. How do I improve from 40 to 50 or 50 to 60 is the game, is the game. Most of you are getting only 30% year marks. That means you are getting only 60 marks or some of you are getting only 20% marks in the moving averages. That means out of 228, you are only getting about 45 marks, let's say. Even there, even here I am saying, can this 45 go to, let's say 90? Can it go to double? Can you go from a 60 percentile to a, a, a 95 percentile? Mind you, a 95 percentile will give you a call from a new IIM. I'm not even talking about the baby IIMs. Of course, they are no longer babies. They have been six years in the making. The newer IIMs like the Ranchi, Rotak, Raipur, Udaipur, Kashi or Trichy kind of things that I'm talking about, at 94-93 percentile, you will be able to make it. At 93-94 percentile, you will be able to make it. Which means to say, however bad your position may be, there is a way in which I am going to put back across to you for the next. I mean, I, I want you to just listen to me for the next 20, 30 minutes before asking questions. How you can do that, right? Now, the first thing is VARC. How do you analyze moving averages for VARC? Let's say the last five mocks. Let's have five, right? Last five mocks, there were 15 para jumbled questions, 50, 10 para summary questions, 10 odd para summary uh, para, para jumbled questions. Let's say there were three, two, two kind of things in every mock that we have given you. Let's say, what is your number of attempts? This is available if you are a career launcher student in the drill down analysis already. Drill down analysis already. Even if you are not, friends, you can figure it out what you are doing. You can understand what have you done. Number of attempts that you have made. Number of correct questions that you made. And what is the accuracy percentage? Because this is important for you to look at it. And wait. I am going to tell you how to kind of improve this accuracy percentage also going forward. And if the attempts are not enough, if the attempts are not good enough, then that is something which you should look at it. So Hani Pandey is asking what could be the ideal attempt percentage. To, to my mind, guys, if it is VARC, I think it should be upwards of 90%. Which means if there are 23 questions, if you are not attempting 20 questions, then I think you are under trouble. In the sense that you will not get a 99 percentile. Okay. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So my answer. So I'll come back to that Satyam Sharma. What I am saying is the way I look at it. If the, if the IAMs have put the CAT 2020 slot 1 as the mock on their website, the IAMCAT.ac.in, 
The only thing I am saying is they didn't bother about it. They don't even want to inform. That means the slot one guys are going to go into an exam without knowing exactly what's going to happen in the exam. They will not know what's going to happen. But the, uh, uh, the slot two and slot three will clearly get to know what are the number of questions, whether any one of us likes it or not. But then it's a good thing that a slot one guys will be the best in that sense of the word then that they don't have to worry about what the rest of the world has done. They are going to set the pace. Here is my point of view, Satyam Sharma and everybody else. My point is, can it is a very high possibility. It's a very high possibility that it will be in the 66-67 range if they reduce the number of questions like the, the, the convener of I am Amdabad of the cat from I am Amdabad has said. Otherwise, it's going to be a 76 question paper. So, I want you to make this. And I'm going to tell you how to improve this. I'm going to tell you how to improve this. What is it? Ideal accuracy, everybody asks. Once you know this, can you look at it? If it's a 25 mark paper, of 25 question paper, actually, it should be. So, there will be 18 questions of RC and 7 questions of VA. Convert that. If it's a 23 questions, there will be 16 questions of RC and 7 questions of VA. So, I'm just giving you an example. So, RC accuracy expected is 75%. And VA accuracy expected is 60%. That means if there are 18 questions in the paper, I'm talking about normal 95 to 99 percentile if you want. If there are 18 questions, that's about 13 to 14 questions correct. 13 to 14 questions correct, 4 wrong, 13 correct, 5 wrong will get you somewhere between 34 to 38 marks in reading comprehension itself if you can reach this accuracy. Which means if your accuracy, see, this is what I want you to look at. What is your accuracy total? This is the accuracy I want. The accuracy percentage of reading comprehension in the last five mocks on an average. This could be 60%. My plan is, can I make it 75%? If it is 40%, can I make it 60%? If it is already 75%, can I make it 80%? If it's already 80, can I make it 85%? It has to be an incremental improvement that is possible. And we have 30 days to go that it can be done. So the idea is if I can do this and again if you notice somebody asked ideal uh, attempts. My idea of ideal attempts my friend as you can clearly see is that I want you to attempt as many as possible especially in VARC. So Deepak but I will answer this question in a simple manner. Whenever you reduce it to two choices in fact, let me look at this question. This is what Deepak Bhatt's question is. I'm going to take a minute away for you to, have, uh, for, uh, uh, to uh, tackle this question itself. Remember one thing, guys. There will be easy questions. There will be difficult questions. And there will be uh, medium level questions. Now, what do I mean by this? Easy level of questions, medium level of questions, difficult level of questions. What I mean by this is, the four choices are there. Three choices can be eliminated easily. If there are four choices, two choices can be eliminated easily. Four choices are there in a difficult question. One choice can be eliminated, which means to say my decision is based on this will be easy for me. This is where I am getting 50% accuracy. And this is where I'll get 33% accuracy. Deepak, are you understanding what I'm saying? I want you to understand this very, very quickly. No, no, don't leave question Shubham Goyal. Shubham Goyal, don't, uh, Deepak, don't take Shubham's answer for this. I am telling you what should you do. And listen to this carefully. Now, if there are 18 questions in RC, if there are 18 questions in RC, my bet is there will be 8 to nine easy questions. There will be four to five difficult questions. And there will be, or three to four difficult questions. And there will be six to seven medium level questions. What I am saying is, can you get out of this eight? Out of, or, 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 or I'll make it easy for us. Let's take it. Nine easy questions will be there. Five difficult questions, uh, medium level questions will be there. And four difficult questions will be there. I am saying, can I get eight correct here? Three correct here? 
one correct here that will make it 13 questions correct i am not still saying that you will get all the nine easy right this will only happen if you attempt correct or or it could be eight correct two uh, correct here and maybe two correct here whichever way i am looking at it i will get 12 correct let's say okay this is 12 correct let's say what i am basically saying is 50 percent accuracy you will get 50 percent accuracy you will get and that means if this is 8 6 14 and 4 you will get one to one two correct here you will get three correct here and seven to eight correct here if you can do this you can see clearly deepak do not worry about the other two do not worry about the other two. Can you understand what I'm trying to explain? You know, very, very few people even try to even gauge this, that you are wasting your time thinking that there is a question which has two choices. There'll be only four or five questions like that. There'll be only four questions or five questions of that nature. Not everybody will be of that. Not every question will be of that nature. Which means to say, I will go ahead and answer. Is that clear? I want you to understand every one of you to look at this. Now, if you can get similarly, if you can get even a 60% average accuracy in verbal ability, that means if there are seven questions, 60% is six sevens are four correct and three wrong. That's fine. Four correct and three wrong is fine. You don't have to worry about that. Sir, I don't have to answer the answer in the para correctly. Do para summary two or three of them correct and do one odd, odd para jumbles correct. You will get four correct, four correct out of seven. My point is, if you can get that 4, 3 is a 12 minus 3 is about 9. If you can slightly more, you will get more. But 40 to 50 is the range that you will start getting then. Even this is 30 and 10, you will start getting 40 to 50 range. And that will be a guaranteed 97 to 99% high. That's ideal VARC. Then, how to target increased attempts? These are some of the ideas that I have. How do you increase? Now, I want you to do something like this. Take topic tests, individual RC tests in the next uh, given days that we have. Take textual, sectional tests with a plan, whatever it is. Even the sectional tests are 26 questions. Try to do 26 questions. Remember, if tomorrow the number, because all of this, whether it is career launcher or other institutes also, they might not have immediately changed all the sectional tests. So don't feel bad about it. Do all 26. If you are able to attempt 26 questions in the actual uh, a sectional test. In the exam, if there are only 23 questions, you will anyway crack 23. The most important thing is same strategy for sectional test and mock 2. The problem is when you write a sectional test, you are not under pressure at all. But the moment you write a mock or a CDC or an All India mock cat, you suddenly feel that I want to get marks. I want to get marks. How will you get marks? If you are not thinking about the questions in front of you and rather thinking about the marks. The only way is when you take faster decisions when the question comes in. I'm not saying hard body decisions. What I'm saying is faster decisions. Saying that take a decision. Read it, take a decision. And this is exactly what I'm saying, Mr. Deepak and everybody else too. If you are able to eliminate even two choices, go ahead and guess. Even one choice, I'm saying one third guess, I would do it if I were you. Do not worry about it. You know, please understand that average is work. And you might say that luck, sir, kabhi mera luck hi hota nahi hai. Probably the luck will catch up positively. So keep that in mind is what I would say. So that's very, very important. So don't worry, Gargi Mishra. Once again, go back to doing your topic test. So when you are not doing well in international games, what do you do? Go back to your uh, Ranji games. That's what you should do. That is what I want you to do. Go back to topic test. Single RCs. Second, spend time on sectional tests and then take the mocks. You will be very, very quickly getting kind of things. Sagar, neither. You want marks. Yaar. How the hell does it matter what accuracy you get as long as you get marks? No, I don't understand how when anybody asks this question at all. Sagar Mehrotra. Marks are the only gospel truth. Nothing else matters. It's the Gita. How do you get doesn't matter. I'll give you an example once again. If you get, let's say, um, 40 marks or let's say, I'll just give you 39 marks. You would have got 13 correct, 0 wrong. You would have got 14 correct, 3 wrong. 15 correct, 6 wrong. 16 correct, 9 wrong. This is 13 attempts. This is 17 attempts. This is 21 attempts. This is 25 attempts. 
if there are 25 questions all of them all of them will give you exactly the same percentile sagar merotra understood no no i am saying initially sagar you need to improve your accuracy first uh, sorry my 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 uh, beg your pardon i am saying initially try to attempt as many questions as possible but what i am trying to do i am trying to tell you will reduce your accuracy uh, will reduce your uh, mistakes also okay now here is what i want you to do i will come back to strategies guys let's quickly look at how to analyze moving averages of dilr also consider this way i'll come back to answer most of these questions give me uh, 10 more minutes to finish the basics so tables there are various let's say this is seven sets are there pie charts there are two sets that you might have done in the last five mocks it's the last five mocks last bar and line uh, matrix based three sets were there arrangements four sets were there grouping and distribution three sets something like that this is sets if there are 28 questions four questions in a set will mean seven sets are there so figure out what you have done again i am saying figure out what you have done figure out what's your accuracy percentage and then say that hey on a bad day what will happen on a good day you know you need to know where you stand and then the next five mocks can you improve so that your moving average will move similarly for qa take area by area don't look at the overall thing arithmetic let's say the last five mocks there were 50 questions in the last five mocks that means 10 questions per mock on an average you would have got from various areas right what what are you doing what is the area which is giving you accuracy what are you getting correct what are you attempting make note of this in your excel sheet and then you will understand bhai what should you focus on for example if your attempts are bad in something and you are okay in that or you are good in that you know the basics in that your entire job would be to improve the attempt in that area just a second guys the other thing is the other thing is if you are not if you are able to attempt properly automatically then the problem will be hey which accuracy is really pulling my scores down can you look at which topic which area which section is getting your scores down and that area that section is what you need to work on to improve on accuracy so either of the two has to be done but how do you improve which one can only happen when i look at the last five mocks six mocks eight mocks that i have with me is that clear similarly youtube user i always pick the wrong sets you are saying look at what you have not attempted for example you are not picking up the arrangements and grouping and distribution you can be guaranteed that in the cat exam 2021 on 28th of november you will get that so please put in that effort so here is the logic for it so similarly for geometry similarly for algebra boss which topics am i doing well this is last five mocks ka check karo please check the last five look at is the attempts the problem or is the accuracy the problem unless you understand unless you figure out what on earth is the problem you will be wasting time writing a mock after a mock after a mock you know many people come back and say sir how many mocks should i write how does it matter if you are not doing this analysis this is the analysis that i want you to do my friends is that clear because if you if both are a problem shubhrato gupta no problems first if at this stage if both are a problem i think i would rather not worry too much about attempts alone i will worry more about accuracy why is that because if i am anyway attempting less number of questions from among all the questions available the assumption that i am making or the deduction that i am making is the areas the, or the questions or the question types you are attempting are the ones that you are most comfortable with and yet you are making mistakes what does this mean you can become you are comfortable you want to become better in that so revise those things again and again and again is that clear you are understanding what i'm saying anushka <laughs> games and tournaments you can skip but again i'm saying one set of games and skip if it's a knockout tournament round robin leg or simple things it's common sense i don't think you should skip ideally if i'm 
friends. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm clear about that. Now, the other thing Puneet Kurana is asking, for example, sir, what about basics are not clear? I think it's not that no basics are clear, Puneet. There'll be some areas where your uh, basics will be good. Pick up those areas kind of things. Right? Now, Funny Kaushik is asking a very interesting question. He's saying, sir, usually in mocks, the passes are difficult to comprehend. Hence, I'm not able to take any guesses. But cat passes are interesting to read. I'm confused if I take some guesses on D-Day. No, you please make the guesses on D-Day also funny. There's no doubt about it in my life. Okay? Now, once you do this, once you do this, once you do understand what you need to do, I am going to talk to you about how to plan for mocks and between mocks, how do you improve? First and foremost is the taking stock. Once you have taken stock, pick areas to improve, whether it is accuracy improvement or the attempts improvement. Attempts improvement will be writing sectional tests, more sectional tests if required be, so that you get more comfortable. And accuracy will be for revision of the things that you have done. Now, here is what I am going to look at it. Make a note of this, guys, if you can. These are the last four weeks starting November 1st. I am not talking about tomorrow. There are 28 days to go. 29th day is tomorrow. And 30th day is today. That's the 30 days to catch mock exactly what we look at. 28th is the D day. So, I am looking at that there will be a 27th of November where you will do nothing. There will be a practice mock that you will do on every Wednesday. There will be a CDC 11, CDC 12, another mock that we will probably come up with you on CDC on every Sunday. Here is my recommendation. All of you know what is, going, what is your uh, slot on the CAT day. May I suggest that you please take your CAT on the exact time as your actual CAT day. For example, if you are writing the exam at 8.30 in the morning, slot 1. I am writing, by the way, slot 1. Start getting up early morning at 5 o'clock every day for the next 30 days, 29 days. Because on the day of the CAT exam, you will get wake up at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. Most probably 6 o'clock. Because the, uh, uh, what is that time? Uh, reporting time is about 7, 7, 15, 7, 30 and they will not allow you to come inside after 8 o'clock or 8, 15. Which means to say, if you need to be there by 7 o'clock, you might start at 6 o'clock. If you are in Bangalore, for example, there, your uh, session will be some 60 kilometers away. If you are in Delhi also, if you are in Noida also, it will take you about half an hour, one hour kind of things or in Calcutta for that matter. Uh, very happily, I am in Hyderabad and my center is walking distance from my home, by the way. It's actually walking distance from my home. I'm lucky. I can get up whatever time. But I'm saying, I mean, setting aside those things. What I'm saying is, figure out how far is your exam uh, session. Start waking up every day for the next 60 days, the next 30 days, exactly at the same time. Maybe at 5 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock, depending on what it requires, 6.30. And at 8.30, Sit for the mock on a Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Next three Sundays after tomorrow, you will have to write it. Ideally, I am saying go ahead and write it on three more exams at least on the Wednesdays of November 3rd, 10th and 17th and 24th. Why am I saying this? You know, it is much more about a rhythm than knowledge. A lot of people don't understand this. If you can't understand it, I can't help you. But I am telling you one thing. It is the rhythm that is required to crack exams, not just knowledge levels. Knowledge levels are important. Look, Kendra, if 200 kilometers away, well, you go one day before itself is what I'm saying. Yeah, and probably Ratul Sharma is saying I'm practicing while wearing masks too. That's a fantastic thing. Probably you might have to do that. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. And if you are writing any non-mock cats, uh, non-cats also like IFT, etc., take up another day on a Monday or a Friday or a Thursday kind of things to do that. Now, here is the plan. After the, on the mock day, see, these are, these are the mock days, guys. These are the mock days. Now, what do you do on the mock day? What do you do on the mock day? First, take the mock at the time of your actual slot. Obviously, check the analysis as the above that I've been talking about. Look at all your overall attempts, accuracy, section-wise, topic-wise, because it's a five-day moving average. Check how close it is to the average, because it's not going to change on the actual day. Then, Jot down all the mistakes, strategy mistakes, as well as the question mistakes. Solve all the mistakes and unsolved questions. Like Jijo would say, find out your Aukath score. Revise all questions that you get correct also. 
I am saying one thing. You know, many people write mocks without re redoing the questions. Please redo the questions once again, once again, once again. No, Anju. This is another thing I am saying. The reason why you are giving alternate days and it's fluctuating because you are not planning the next mock properly. You are not improving anything on the next mock. And that's the reason why it will happen that way. So don't do it is what I would say. And Avish, Avishek Paul, I've just said this, how you want to do it in a, 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 a few minutes back. Now I'm going to look at how improve your accuracy for the 29 day plan. 29 day plan because I'm expecting that there'll be nothing today, mostly. Or a 28 day plan, to be honest. Eight mocks day. Look at what I'm doing. Eight mocks. Tomorrow is one mock. Seven more mocks that are I've already talked about. Look at this. One practice mocks, four, three CDCs, seven mocks. And tomorrow, if you look at it, one more mock. Eight mocks, one chill pill day, one D day. Ten days are gone. Five days will be a wastage also probably. Discount the Diwali day. Let's say you want to enjoy with your friends and your family. Discount the post Diwali day. You are in a hangover if you are, well, you are, uh, you need the day. Discount the last two days. The chill day and the D day are gone. Discount the one off day that you will not study. Five days gone, eight plus one, one, 15 days gone approximately. But I'm saying starting from today, you will still have 15 days to really work at the max. 15 days to really work. I am saying this, you can improve even today, even today, even given that we have only 30 days to go per section, five questions extra you can do or Four questions reduce mistakes. Reduce mistakes. That is the reason why I said we need to figure out how to improve an attempt or decrease a mistake. For example, for example, in every section, except in a verbal section, every section, if you can improve two attempts and decrease two mistakes, Overall, from what you are getting as of today, this will be 6 marks plus and this will be 8 marks plus. That will be 14 marks extra. Two attempts extra in every section, especially in quant and DILR. And in verbal ability, verbal ability, reading comprehension, try reducing two or three mistakes. In verbal ability, try reducing one or two mistakes. Mistakes have to be reduced. And that is what I'm going to tell you how. Because improving accuracy is the goal while increasing this. Any extra day apart from this 15 days that you have, given that we have 30 days to go, look at what I'm trying to tell you. I am not even counting the day of the mock. I am not even counting the day of the mock. That day also there is a day where you can put in lots of effort. I am saying forget about it. 15 days is more than sufficient. Some of you in the IITs and NITs have their exams coming up. You will lose that 10 to 15 days. I understand that. Please understand that you can you can cry whatever you want, but you will have a chance. Keep that in mind is what I'm saying. How do you increase accuracy in uh, verbal ability? I'll take another 10 minutes and then ask, answer the questions, guys. Divide these 15 days into three sets of five days each. So, for example, 1st November, 2nd November, 3rd is a mock day, 4th is a Diwali, 4th is a Diwali, 5th Sixth, seventh is a exam, mock. This is a mock day, mock day. This is Diwali. So you have four days here. Then eighth, ninth, tenth. You have one more day. So first, second, fifth, sixth and eighth. These are my set one. Likewise, nine, ten. Uh, nine, ten is not there. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen are gone. Maybe fourteen, set two. Likewise, make five sets of five day sets of three sets. What do you do? Solve 10 questions per day from drill down analysis area. Meaning of all the questions that you have done already, extra. In other words, I am saying 50 questions per every type of question, for every type of question. For example, if it is a para summary or an odd para jumble or a para jumble, what I want you to do is 
start with the rules in mind saying that okay if i am looking at a para summary if i am looking at a para summary i am going to look at the key words that i should be there in my summary so there is a rule that i make for myself or you might make from yourself and use that rule to be able to utilize that because if you start with the rules after every 10 questions review these rules and update the rules add more rules to yourself it could be very very useful for all of these things and then go to step 1 if you do this if you do this for 10 questions a day for example what i'm saying is what i'm saying is the five 50 questions of para jumbles in 5 days 50 questions of para summary in 5 days 50 questions of odd para jumbles in 5 days that means you are doing 150 questions total 150 questions total but in each of these 50 you are looking at hey what went right what went wrong all the questions which you have done correct also you will solve them all the questions you have gone wrong also you will solve them slowly and steadily you will get your rules ingrained in your brain reading comprehension here i am saying 10 questions per day 10 questions per day on various kinds of things there are five areas inference based fact based fact based inference main idea maybe others logical structure etc you might want to do more of this second most of this and then this one what i am saying is pick the last 10 marks in the uh, last five marks pick only inference questions from the drill analysis if you are a career launcher student otherwise also check out which is an inference question do 10 questions per day per day that's it next 5 days do 50 inference questions or next 3 days sorry do 30 inference questions next 3 days after that 30 fact based questions next 3 days 30 fact based inference questions what am i trying to do what am i trying to tell you is you have to get into a drill of doing this it is the rhythm that you need to get it and what will you do is this in 15 days you would do 150 questions in each question there is a passage each question is of a particular passage approximately you will do 100 passages new or old passages also which will cover science economics uh, history geography philosophy psychology whatever else more than sufficient begin again with the rules in mind and focus on eliminating options so now is the time to focus again and again on the questions or the types of questions which you have solved that is improvement or total vrc that i'm expecting you to do is va will be 30 minutes approximately rc will be 60 minutes topic test will be for let's say 10 minutes or a sectional test on a particular day for 40 minutes and 40 minutes of analysis vocabulary of all the things that you have done on that day 20 minutes i am expecting you to allocate 2 hours to 3 hours for your verbal ability from now onwards on the 15 days that you are not writing a mock this is about for the non mock days this is all i want you to do second dilr very similarly i am giving you this venn diagrams and set theory next to two days on first and second do 10 sets from the from the mocks that you already done third and fourth let's say you will forget it fifth and sixth two days do arrangement sets 10 sets of arrangements this is set theory arrangements likewise grouping and distribution likewise games and tournaments that means in eight days the most important 30 45 sets you will solve this is over and above what your mocks you are doing by the way this is the sets that you have already solved in your cdcs and other mocks prior to that even if you are taking somebody else's mocks that is what you should do exactly same thing for di also 5 days do about 30 odd sets from these areas these kinds of graphs the reason i'm asking you to do it is you want to get once again i'm using the word only one word here you need the rhythm you need a familiarity i keep using this word so many times you will get that familiarity think about it if you do 10 sets of venn diagrams and set theory in two days five five sets a day or here this could be three sets of 
15 days, 15 sets of arrangements. If you continuously do, coming back to this, five sets of Venn diagrams on day one, five sets of day two, set theory. Any other set theory question which comes in the exam, you will be able to identify it very quickly. More important than identifying it quickly is, is, because, is your decision making whether you will solve it or not solve it. Okay? Forget about the timer, Sakshi. Next. In other words, five sets per day if you want. Maximum of 120 minutes. I'm giving you 24 minutes per set to do. Can you do this? I'm pretty sure you can. 10 minutes on speed maths. 10 minutes on speed maths. This will help you. This will really, really help you to do things faster. Or for a QA, I'm again giving you a 15-day plan, guys. 15-day plan. Remember, the 30 days out of which 15 days I am saying you will lose in one way or the other. But the other 15 days, what do you do? Five days, you plan one is for a person who is very good in QA and broadly good in all areas. So you need to do all the areas. Arithmetic, algebra, geometry, numbers, without fail. Now, somebody who is not so good in quant, but focus on arithmetic. I am saying, out of the 15 days, give the entire time in arithmetic and algebra and forget about the others. Somebody asked me, sir, Shanae, can I leave permutation combinations? Please, no problems. Or somebody who is not good in geometry mensuration or numbers. This could be one plan. Or for an engineer, good in QA, but not very strong in arithmetic. No problems. You still do this. I am giving you some idea. You can make your own plan. You can make your own plan. What I am giving you is, this is what you need to do. And what do you do in these 15 days? What do you do in each of the days? Here it is. How do you revise quantitative ability? Before starting to work on a QA topic, before starting to work on a QA topic, write down on a sheet of paper all the formulae for that topic. Take a, uh, you know, sit down for a day. That 15 days, one day, let's say you want to work on uh, time, speed, and distance. Pick up and say, hey, time, speed, and distance has uh, basic distance is equal to speed into time. It has average speed is equal to total distance by total time. It has relative speed, uh, uh, relative speed with on the surface, relative speed, boats and streams, relative speed on, uh, let's say, uh, boats and streams and escalator. Then you talk about circular races, races, circular races, clocks. You quickly make this kind of all the types of questions that can all the concepts that can come in. Once you write down, write down any concept that you have used for solving before also. This exercise itself will take you 15 to 30 minutes for every topic. Don't be in a hurry to finish. Do it for every topic. Then check with the Funda book or any book that you have for that topic, whether you have missed out anything for that particular topic. Then solve 30 to 50 questions per topic from the previous mocks, cat originals and not more than 50 in that day. Even if you spend three minutes a day, three minutes per question, you will spend maximum of 150 minutes on this. This is revision. This is revision. Pick 15 topics. There are more than sufficient. 15 topics that you want to look at and do these things, my friends, from the previous mocks and cat originals, you will be happy. Revise if you have taken DILR 1000 or QA 1000. People came asking, sir, there are no new sets. People keep asking that. Are yaar, jo aata hai, wahi to acha karo. QA, I have picked up a lot of these things are original CAT papers. You need to know how to solve them. You need to get the grill of how the concept is used. If there is a new concept which you can't understand, forget about it. Forget about it. But you will, you will be very, very happy. Now, this is the summary for you for approximately total VARC maybe about 120 hour, 120 minutes maybe DILR about 3 hours maybe this is 2 hours maybe QA again 2 and a half hours maybe I am expecting that a minimum of 6 hours to 8 hours on a non-mock day if you can do it those of you can't do it I understand but this is what your plan should be out of the 24 hours that you have day in a day make a note of this guys Make a note of this. This is very, very useful for you. Very, very useful for you. Next. Therefore, this is what I can tell you how to spend your time. Before 12 noon, maybe in the morning, 2 to 3 hours. Somewhere between 12 to 6 p.m. if you are not, take out 2 hours maybe. 
maybe here three hours, maybe two hours, and six to twelve a.m., two to three hours, you will be able to spend between six to nine hours. If you are fully sitting at home, obviously you have the time, but don't worry about how much is there to be solved. What you can solve, what is available, is what I want you to do. This is a you know I'm I'm giving you almost like formula of what you should. Do. And the final word before I ask you all the questions, I'll answer other questions to you guys. Guys, difference between sectional scores and mock scores will be there. There is no doubt about it. Because sectional scores are two, slightly easier. More importantly, you have lesser expectations from that. What happens because of that is there is a huge desperation that comes in and there is a loss of confidence. You might think of wanting to give up, but or have a lot of self-doubts. My only thing is, boss, overthinking and over-strategizing will be harmful. Not even can be harmful, will be harmful. So what do you do? You do much better than 30 days can be a turnaround fortunes. You can turn around fortunes even today. And if you can understand and focus on the exams without thinking of the results, you can make it, my friends. I have given you as, as uh, compact a plan. Blindly follow it. You will be surprised. Even if you're getting 40, 50, 60 percentiles, you will go to 90, 95 percentile. 95 percentiles you're getting, you can go to 99 percentile. Even at a 99 percentiles, what this will help you is to go to the 99.6, 99.8 percentiles. And the last word I'm going to tell you is, boss, you are doing it for yourself. Not to showcase it to the world. You know, many a time you are under pressure because you want to showcase it to the world. You want to showcase that you are good. You want to showcase to your parents, your girlfriends, your boyfriends, etc. kind of things. Or to your friends itself. Bullshit. Doesn't matter. It's all about yourself. Understand that. And so don't pressurize yourself. The rest of the world can pressurize you. But why are you pressurizing yourself? I have only one word to say. Just enjoy the exam. And all the very best. We at CL are always there to help you guys. And I'm going to stop it here and answer a lot of questions that you will have on the screen. So let me come back to you and see if I can help. And this video will be available. I just didn't want to kind of, uh, you know, make it very, very long. I want to make it a 50-minute video. Point by point, how to analyze. And what to do is absolutely, absolutely given. I hope you, I am almost saying this, just do it blindly. On 28th of November, when I come back and ask you about the analysis, I am guaranteeing you that you will be very happy that you have done this. Okay. With that, any questions, I will just quickly. Sir, I have a weird question. I'm currently sick with fever. Take a little bit of rest, uh, Aditya Jain. How can I utilize the time while being sick? So I am saying, really, Aditya, Relax a little. If you are sick, you are listening to me, but don't waste. Read a little bit. 20, 20 minutes. Take short, uh, uh, you know, 15 minute studies if you want. Two sets, one set and sleep more time. That is the best thing that I would like you to do. See, Abe, uh, uh, Abe Sebastian, I am not even asking you to do very, very fast kind of things. I am saying if you solve a similar kind of set again and again, you will start getting that much, much more easily. That is what I am trying to say. Okay. So, Saurabh is asking, Sir, I haven't started mocks for IFT and NMAT. How do I approach these mocks with regard to the schedule? For the moment, Saurabh, what I would say is that uh, use one more day in between to write a mock. Maybe you will reduce the amount. Please understand there is always a day of the mock also. On the day of the mock where I have not put any schedule, use that time of that mock. Uh, to do the analysis and reworking on this. But what you do for CAT will be very much useful for IFT and MAT also. So, Nishant Saxena, you cannot complete the CAT syllabus. Whatever you have completed, stick to that is what I would say. Okay? So, my VARC and QA are weak. What to do? Shubh Kapadiwala. All I am trying to say is, given what you know, can you improve that? Pick, like I said, pick one topic in QA. Become good in that. Pick an area like RC. Within the RC, uh, become good in that. That's all I would say you should do better. So how much time to be given to RC and VA on a separately on a D-Day? RC and uh, see, for me, if it is a 40-minute paper and there are seven questions in VA, I don't think you should give more than 10 minutes to that. And the rest of it, Sony, should be for RC. 
Sayantika, Majumdar. Thank you, sir. Your words are very powerful. Anybody who has lost already hope will also feel like giving. No, it is not a last try. I really mean what every word I've said, uh, Sayantika. I'm very happy that you feel that same way. And I'm saying, let's not give up. Let's not give up at all. Compendium for CLGK will be coming up, Vardhan, very soon. So sectionals is where I'm saying within the day, for example, um, I am saying that in a day, pick only one sectional to do, that 40 minutes. On a day, you don't do three sectionals, Paritosh. Only one sectional, whichever sectional. That means in 15 days you have, you will do five sectional tests. Five into three, 15. That's, that's the way I look at it. I'm good in arithmetic, but uh, geometry, but arithmetic and algebra are not good for the, what's the question? So here is what I'm saying. If you're already good in geometry, I would like you to spend a little time on, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of arithmetic, especially, uh, 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 you know, your ratios, percentages, time and work kind of things. In algebra, one area I would want you to work on is sequences and series, that is progressions. Please do, don't forget that. Had a back, bad mock, Nihal is saying 10 days back. After that, didn't take a single mock. Sir, start taking it tomorrow. Write the All India mock, open mock exam without fail. Okay, Arijit, sir, I do good while preparing topic wise, but can't cross 8 to 10 questions right in this section. See, 8 to 10 questions right in this section is good. Can you increase it to 12? That means pick that one area which is really not giving you marks. I think you will be much better off, Arijit Kundu. Naveen Agarwal, sir, in the mocks, I'm scoring in the range of 50 to 75. Can I even think of reaching score of 100? Exactly what I'm saying. 15 marks is very much possible per section over the next 30 days. Naveen Agarwal, I would be very surprised if you didn't put in effort there. Sir, my new DLR section mocks are horrifying. Should I actually bother too much about it? Funny Kaushik, they're not really, really bad. I'm saying revise them. What we are preparing you for is to be ready to do any shock. But because we are giving you enough shocks in all the countdown mocks or the All India mocks, etc. When you go to the CAT exam, you will find that the paper will be very, very familiar kind of, kind of things. Right? <laughs> Atul. 100% Atul Patel. I would be loving, I, I would love to meet you too. Compound interest and percentages sometimes gets me off guard. Should I practice LOD 1 again for them? Yes, Ratul. It might happen and go back to the original cat questions. Simran Maheshwari. I am weak in DILR. So, Simran, pick up arrangements, grouping and distribution. If you can, pick up set theory and a little bit of data interpretation kind of things, especially matrix level questions. It will definitely help you. Five different areas. Just work in kind of things. Ashish. Sir, I came here suddenly and helped me. I'm going to study now. Thank you for a great strategy. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ashish Bijwe. It's very nice that somebody finds this useful, really. Himadri is saying, I'm good in arithmetic and geometry, but algebra is worst. How can I do at least two to three questions from algebra? Pick up sequence and series, pick up indices and pick up logs. That should be good enough. Ayesha, sir, my mocks are not increasing more than 40. Can I expect 100? See, I'll tell you why. I don't know whether you can get 100, but I think from 40, you can go to 75 to 80, which is also going to be very, very good to get a 93, 95 percentile close to. Thanks, Atul. Thanks, Arjit. Aditi, sir, from where should we practice different sets? From the previous mocks that you have written already, Aditi. If you have not written the previous mocks, pick up the mocks and con convert them into sectional tests and take it. Sir, my mock score is stagnant at 80s. How to ensure 100s? Clearly, Tushar, there are only one way it can improve. I think you are stagnated in your attempts, Tushar Satya. Can you try improving two, two attempts in each of the three sections? Six attempts extra, you will suddenly see the scores going up. Don't worry about making mistakes in the first or second one. Initially, the score will go down a little bit, a little. Don't worry about it. So where can I get these much questions daily? So Irshad, please use, uh, use your last year, all the previous mock papers. Don't do anything new. Lokendra, sir, I can solve most of DLR 1000 questions, but in mocks, one and a half sets or two, if I'm familiar, how to go about improving? Lokendra, DILR, I have picked up those questions to ensure that all the types of questions will be of the level of CAT. Mocks will give you slightly more difficult questions. Don't worry about that. But do solve them 
on the day of the CAT exam, on the day of the mock exam itself. But if you are good in DILR 1000, I have also released a week 8. I will start uh, making the video solutions for that. Trust me, it will be more than sufficient. Sir, I am planning to crack 2022. Sampangi Srinivas. But I want to attempt this year knowing pattern and what topics I need to cover. Friend, just go and enjoy yourself the exam. Don't worry about it. Manshika, thank you so much for this. In the mock questions, I can solve 80% of QA and DILR, but within finite time. Is it possible to crack at? Frankly, Prabhat, yes is my answer. But now in an exam, in the mocks and the exam, you need to take decisions quickly. Right? Thank you so much, Bhavesh. Once again, it's motivating for me to, to do keep doing this. Should I give up on CAD if I am scoring 25 to 50? Acoustic Adarsh, can you make it to 55 to 75, which is what I'm saying, which will be more than 80 percentile. And you will get some of the very, very good scores. Instead of going to a third-rate colleges, you can go to tier two colleges, worst case. So don't give up is what I'm saying. Gauri Shankar, one, only one to two questions getting correct in quant. So there's some easy topics. Gauri Shankar, geometry is one area I would say could be an easy topic. Formulae wise, indices and logs could be if you can understand. But if you can't, go back to your basic arithmetic is what I would say. Sanket, DILR, again I'm saying, pick games and tournaments if you can, set theory, arrangements, grouping and distribution, and bit of DI, especially bar charts and uh, scatter diagrams kind of things. Scatter, spider, all those graphs which have come in the last, last year's cat. I am saying, if you solve them not once, twice over the next 30 days, it will be good enough. Right? Advaita Gaur, I'm a night class student and want to ask, he is taking just 10 to 12 marks and not the master marks, but revising them well work. Yes, at this stage, Advaita, 7, 8 mocks are more than sufficient and revision of the previous mocks and these mocks are more important than just writing mocks. Are, don't worry about the people who are doing it kind of things. I will be taking up uh, one on Arijit uh, on the colleges also very, very soon. So that's 8 o'clock to one hour session that I thought I will do. Thank you so much for being with me, guys. I hope this session was really, really useful. And uh, uh, I'll be back very soon with uh, more information and more such strategies. Thanks once again. If you have any questions, you have my email ID, ARKSS, at careerlauncher.com. Please feel free to write and don't give up. Happy Diwali. Safe Diwali to all of you who are there. Okay, we have 30 days to go of work in hand. Let's crack cat. Thank you so much.